this segment, we're going to talk about the perceptron. This is going to be a basic algorithm for training a, well, in this case, we're going to look at binary classification, but training a linear binary classifier that we're going to be able to apply to our sentiment analysis example. So again, recall that a binary classifier, uh, we were defining to have the following decision rule. Um, and in this case, I'm going to use uh, whether the weights dotted with the features is strictly greater than zero. Um, and this is going to give us a uh, decision y, which is either going to be minus 1 if it's you know, less than or equal to 0, or plus 1 if it's uh, greater than 0. All right. And so what we are doing is we are defining an algorithm to learn this set of weights w from a training set. So here is the perceptron algorithm. So we are going to run this for a certain number of epochs. Um, this is typically how we use it in practice. You can also run it until it converges, uh, but that's not going to be something we're doing much in this course. We're going to iterate through our data. And then the first step is we take, uh, we basically make a prediction using the weights applied to the current uh, example. And so again, this is going to return either uh, plus 1 or minus 1. And then we are going to update our weight vector based on this prediction. So if uh, y pred equals yi. So if we predicted the example correctly, we are going to do nothing. We are just going to keep the weight vector the same. Um, otherwise, we are going to uh, add alpha times f of xi um, if yi is plus 1 and we are going to subtract alpha times f of xi if if yi equals minus 1. So essentially, if we predict the example incorrectly, and it should have been a positive prediction, but it was negative, that's this, uh, you know, that's this first else line here, then we are going to add the weight vector into, uh, sorry, the feature vector times uh, a constant alpha into the weight vector. And so recall that the features and the weights are in the same space. So if we have a 10,000 dimensional feature space, we also have a 10,000 dimensional weight vector. And so these things can be added together. And roughly what this is going to do is it's going to encourage the dot product of the weights and the features to be more positive on uh, future iterations. So um, in a uh, machine learning course, you can prove that this will uh, converge if the data are eventually separable. So in the other case, the other else line, we uh, subtract alpha times f of x if y is negative. And that's just because we want to uh, down, essentially downweight the value of the prediction in the case where uh, the true label was negative. All right, so let's see how this actually works out on uh, an example. So we are going to look at uh, some even more simplified sentiment examples now. Movie good, movie bad, and not good. 
OK. And so uh, we've got a value of y for each one. So plus 1, minus 1, minus 1. Um, and then we have uh, our features f of x, which uh, we are going to represent by these columns m, g, b, and n. Um, which stands for movie, good, bad, and not. So again, we have a bag of words feature space with four features here. Uh, and the value of each is just going to be the count of that uh, word in the sentence. It's the <laughs> silliest sentence ever. Um, and so uh, that is going to give the following feature vectors. All right, so you should be able to verify that by counting the, uh, you know, just counting the, the number of occurrences of each word, we get something like this. All right, so now we're going to start off with a weight vector w, which is going to be all zeros. All right, and now we're going to follow the algorithm. So uh, we're going to come to this first example. We're just going to go through these examples in order. So uh, for the first example, y pred is going to be minus 1. And the reason is that uh, you know, we have an all zero weight vector. So when we dot it with the feature vector, we are going to end up with uh, a value of 0. And recall that we said that our decision rule in this case was, is the weights transpose the feature strictly greater than 0 in order for it to be positive? Um, so again, the, the ties don't really matter, but we have to define it for the purposes of this, uh, you know, of this uh, execution. So what happens then is we update w according to uh, the first else line here. So we are going to add alpha times the weight times the feature vector to w. And so uh, let's just say that alpha is 1 for simplicity. And so after this first example, after dealing with this first example, we are going to have uh, 1, 1, 0, 0 as our weight vector. All right. We come to the second example. So y pred. I'll give you a few seconds to think about it, but then I'll spoil the answer, which is that y pred in this case is going to be plus 1. And roughly, this is because uh, we've learned that movie is associated with positive sentiment. OK, that's not actually right in this case, um, but it was a reasonable thing to learn from the first example. We don't know whether it's movie or good that's making it positive. Uh, so y pred is 1. Uh, the actual y is minus 1. This is bad. Uh, and so we go to that second else line down there, and we're going to subtract off the, uh, the, the features. And so that's going to give us the following, uh, the following weight vector now. All right. We'll go through the, we'll just, you know, the third line. Uh, again, you know, I, I, I cooked this up, so it, it, would, it would always be wrong. Um, and uh, so we, again, make the wrong prediction. We're again going to subtract off. And so we end up with 0, 1, minus 1, uh, minus 1. OK, and so this is, uh, you know, this, oh, uh, wait. Um, Zero, zero, minus one, minus one. Uh, so what we've learned at the end of this first epoch, this first pass through the data, is that uh, bad has uh, negative weight here, and not also has negative weight. OK, now we're going to kind of come back around to the first example. Um, so I'm just going to re reproduce that down here. Um, this, so, so this was, this was kind of epoch 1. 
Um, and this is going to be epoch 2. Um, you know, again, I'm just going to rewrite the example. Uh, and it turns out that here we, again, screw up this first one. Um, we get y pred as minus 1. Uh, and it should have been positive, so we add, you know, we add in the example. Uh, and then we get 1, 1, minus 1, minus 1. Um, all right, and now it turns out we're actually good. When we go through the rest of the examples, we're going to classify them as positive, and it turns out, you know, we could keep doing this as long as we want, and we'll always classify them as positive. So uh, the algorithm is converged. So hopefully this kind of shows you, uh, you know, sort of how this works and how from this kind of data we can learn some reasonable weights here. All right, we're going to look at one more example uh, and then to, to kind of understand one of the shortcomings of this algorithm. So we're going to use the following for, again, quote unquote sentences. So good, bad, not good, uh, not bad. Again, y plus 1, minus 1, minus 1, plus 1. Uh, and then uh, here are the, uh, the f of x's, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, and 0, 1, 1. All right, so I'm just going to draw this uh, using my three-dimensional drawing skills, which are non-existent. But, uh, and we end up with the points arranged like this. Um, so again, this is a good kind of test for visualizing what these feature spaces look like. Um, so because we have three features, we're in a three-dimensional space. And so uh, if we think about you know, this point, for example, corresponds to not bad because uh, we're kind of out at position one on the bad axis, position one on the not axis, and then position zero on the good axis. Uh, yeah. All right. And so uh, what happens when we execute the algorithm? So I encourage you to go off and do this as an exercise. Uh, but you might already kind of see the problem here, which is that uh, the algorithm will actually loop infinitely. Um, and this is because the data are not separable. Um, the perceptron is guaranteed to find a solution uh, or a classification boundary that separates the positive and negative examples if one is possible. In this case, you can't do it. They're, they're kind of on this, uh, they're sort of on this sheet that's exactly, you know, uh, aligned with your screen, um, and there's no way to there's no way to, to cut them up. So this, this kind of illustrates, I, I mean, th this sort of illustrates a uh, fundamental issue with the perceptron and unigram features, which is that uh, they can't model these interactions between words that are somewhat important. Um, and so the solution to this ends up being that uh, we want to add bigrams. Um, and so what we could do is we can expand our feature space with not good and not bad. Um, and uh, it turns out if we do this, um, you know, I'm not going to draw a five-dimensional space because I can't. But uh, if we do this, the data end up being separable, and now we, uh, now we can classify them. Um, and so separability is not something that we're going to think about all that much because uh, a lot of times the data, you know, is separable because you just end up with having a bunch of features. But um, what this does illustrate is that by changing the underlying feature set, uh, we're going to go from, you know, something that doesn't work to something that does work. And that is going to be a pattern that we see fairly frequently. Um, as we think about feature design problems for the first part of this course. Uh, so essentially this shows how the kind of how the perceptron works. You've seen an example of it, uh, and we can think a little bit about how it interacts with the underlying set of features. That's it for this segment.